Good morning. Thanks, everybody, for coming. <coughs> Thank you, Michele. So we, we saw one very interesting, unique short film yesterday evening. It's a case study. Why case study? Because it was a, a quite a interesting uh, director's concept, the, the structure, which is a kind of linear narrative story in a film narration. So we'll start, to Michele, about uh, how it is to, 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 to search for maybe more than 100 of, 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 of uh, tapes or, or material in 35 on digital just to find this scene which, which amazed us uh, also in the opening title. It's, a, it's a two or three minutes, the scenes which we will never forget and present like a history of, of a world cinema, let's say. Uh, what about the, the idea and the concept of this film, Michele? Okay, first of all, this movie deals with many uh, matters in uh, film history. I'm very much interested in old films. Uh, my own theory is that actually movie died in the late 70s, early 80s, and after that, we are just keep repeating what has been done before. This movie deals, as I said, with many things. One is restoration and preservation of films. I'm very happy that Michael Fairman is here. We had a discussion about uh, preservation of movies three years ago and how they look now on the digital media when they were transferred from 35 millimeters or 70 or 16 to the digital era. The movie deals also with uh, passing from the analog era to the digital era and uh, I'm not against anything here. And it, it's done in a surrealist way, which for me is the only possible way to shoot a film. Now, I'm not interested in to feel reality as many directors now are saying and uh, are having a, a huge success all around the world in film festival, trying to film reality. I'm with the Godard about that. It's impossible to film reality. Actually, reality is cinema. That's my theory. But maybe we will do more this afternoon at the masterclass about that with my real theories. So this movie came as an homage to old films. And of course, uh, the most difficult task was to secure the rights of the clips of some classics that are inside the film. And then I had to choose the pieces, as Gena said, and to cut them together because they, are, they interact with our own story. This is not a typical structure of a film that is divided like Aristotle says in three hats, first, second, and third. But I'm kind of a, a rhizomatous approach to the storyline. I want, I want the storyline to spread in many different directions and uh, to suggest new ways to tell it. Could be at the first view maybe a little bit difficult, but as I said last night, if you watch deeper inside the film, the film you will watch deeper inside you when you will find an answer in it. Uh, but the story, there is a story, wherever I said that the structure is different, but there is a story, there is somebody who, is, who has his love life, who has his everyday living, and now just one footage turned up his life up and down. Um, everywhere around him. Uh, so, as I said yesterday, some, somebody lose something or somebody had been disappeared in some, in some, in some uh, a place and this person just found it. And when he found that, his, his life turned up down. Yes, the, the movie is also very much in, about an obsession, which is the magnificent obsession to quote Douglas Circle. Uh, my initial obsession, of course, about movies, uh, which is my obsession. I'm obsessed with movie images since when I was seven. I start to collect movies on film when I was eight. Oh my God. Normal eight, super eight, 35, 16, and something like that. As I said, the surrealist way is the only way possible, but I like very much to play with genre structure. So I'm going to get, as I'm doing with all my stuff, a genre structure and tear it apart. In this case, it's the structure of a fantastic horror film. So the movie on the first layer can be read as a simple horror film. And I'm very happy that last night, because I, I, I didn't think it was scary enough. Last night a couple of persons uh, came to me and said, it was very scary. And I said, wow, oh, I'm very happy. Because that meant that I was trying to do is also working on a genre level for, I mean, a common viewer that is not that much inside the details. The found movie. Because movie, in a way, when you're obsessed with them, they're going to find you and you're going to find them. So it's an interaction and a reality mix all together. There is the past of the present, uh, 
future of the present, the present of the present, as San Agostina said, and they mix all together in this film. We really don't know which, if it's reality or if it's a film. But to go further, the Godard position, to me, uh, the only reality possible is a film. And I'm going further. The film is reality, we are not. Thank you, Gamba, cinematographer. Uh, I like the scenes in the streets, you know, when they're just uh, passing by to each other. And uh, he's a little bit, you know, some kind of, uh, in, a, in, a, in the same time, afraid and uh, wondering what's going on now. So how did you do it? Um, did you, did you uh, have uh, quiet help by, by the computers? And uh, what was uh, your, let's say, favorite scene to be shooting on, in this movie? Um, uh, at first, uh, um, I'm sorry, my English is not good enough uh, for the, um, if you don't mind, I, I provide of the perfect English of the, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> So um, I, I will I will speak Italian and uh, uh, I'm going to translate. La, la mia scena preferita è quella delle, delle candele con, uh, con i ragazzi. The, his favorite scene is a scene that we shot only with light candles with small kids inside an abandoned house. Credo lei parlasse della, della scena del, di quando cambiano cambiano i ruoli. insieme d'accordo con te la, la storia in, in tre eh, colorimetrie diverse. No? La prima parte è una colorimetria più normale che eh, diciamo, ehm, ci invita a pensare alla, alla realtà di quello che sta succedendo, poi quando c'è l'inversione dei personaggi eh, passiamo a una colorimetria più fredda e in particolare con diciamo, Tedel Bracciano no? come dominante. Um. Since I asked him this and uh, we worked together on this uh, to divide the movie in uh, three different uh, kind of uh, uh, color grading. So the first part of the film is much more realistic. And then when something happened in the film, I don't know if you saw the film, but there is a split in the personality of the main character, which turned out to be another person, uh, we change for two, two different kind of lighting with the uh, Sian uh, dominant. And then? E poi quando vediamo che il film è un film dentro il film, alla fine, eh, abbiamo scelto di, eh, diciamo, di portare alla colorimetria e il contrasto come ehm, con quel processo che nella, quando c'era la pellicola si chiamava Bleach Bypass, cioè il salto della sbianca. And uh, for the third part, when we realize that everything probably is a movie, and then it's not, it's a movie within a movie, within a movie, within a movie. And um, we decided, uh, I asked him that I wanted something completely different, very grainy, very film-like. We couldn't shoot on film, unfortunately, because the budget didn't allow us, because the film was uh, very expensive, because of the footage that was inside. The, they ask you, actually, uh, a lot of money to do that. For this third part, uh, I actually forgot about this process, but he, he said, why don't we try this? This is the bleach bypass. So for the last part, it's a total different uh, color grain from the second part and from the first part. And uh, let me tell you also two seconds about the film clips, which uh, is a shame because most of the time they ask you a fortune for a movie like that, which is a medium length film and uh, the commercial exploitation is limited. I've been asked for one minute of a very famous film, which I'm not going to name, what, 30,000 euros. And the movie has been exploited, exploited so much. And you said 30,000 euros for one minute. One minute, yes. I said, but I'm going to use only four seconds of that video. We need only four seconds. We don't carry a gap to buy a minute. And it's 30,000 euros, which it's not the budget of the film, but let's say a third of the budget of the film. So it, it was impossible. Sophia, Sophia, welcome. Um, it's it's interesting to, to, to see that uh, this crew, this uh, film crew, is quite international. Sophia is coming from Greece. She is a film actress, and uh, 
what, how it was your, 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 your decision, how it came to this decision for you to, to, to be uh, one of the main characters in this movie. So, first of all, I would like to uh, say thank to Michael DeAngelis, our director, for the opportunity he, gave, he has given to me to be here in Bizela uh, at Monaki Brothers Fair Film Festival. You have beautiful plays, creative people, and many, many movies. <laughs> so, Michael discovered me in a beautiful slice, uh, seaside city in Greece. He saw me and asked me if I would like to play in his film. Mm -hmm. Well, now, now I'm here with you. That was nothing more. Uh, I just uh, want to say it because I asked her because uh, I was keeping uh, watching that and I said that she, this girl reminds me something, this girl reminds me something, this girl reminds me something. At one point I had a kind of uh, enlightenment and said, well, she looks very much like Barbara still, the actress from the 60s. Yeah. So it actually is uh, my wife uh, idea, I said, why don't you put her in your film, it's about movies. So uh, I decided to ask her and, uh, to join the film because she, like, in, in the, in, it's a, as I said, it's, it's, a, it's about an obsession. So the, the main character is calling his girlfriend Barbara because he's obsessed with Barbara yeah. still, but that, her name is actually the movie's Natalia and she's always getting upset and say, why are you calling me this way? And uh, that's pretty much the story. Uh, Sophia, how it was that the shooting with uh, with uh, uh, did, did you have a good relation with the camera? Did you have a uh, good preparation and uh, everything was well? Everything was amazing. Michele has very good crew. Everybody was very, very good with everybody else around us. Ezio was Actually, he helped me very much, and he did, and he do it yet. Because I spent many hours with Michele and Ezio not nowadays. Okay. So everything was very nice because Michele was good director. He's a quite persuasive, and he, he can do it. So let me just with Cornelia. <laughs> Cornelia, što um, bese prisutno da da ga da je pripatite ova koprodukcija sa so Michele De Angelis na ovoj film. Prvo kako, prvo kako projekt beše dosta interesan. Ovo je naša prva svarabotka sa Michele i su Italija. Za naše sreke je uspešno da dobijemo i podrška od agencijata za film, što beše dosta značajna i celata postprodukcija se napravi vo Makedonija. Se vključuje golem broj na aktori, montažero Tatana Zdorgijevske, Vertigo, pota Igor Popovski so audio design, Entonski FX3 X so color korekcija. Imamo odlična sorabotka in mislim, da ka, in se nadevam iskreno, da ki ponatelno, ki imamo sorabotka so ne tela, da je ki je celo ta ekipa beš dosta profesionalna in smetam, da ka završitme na dosta dobra in uspešna rabota. Questions? Okay. It's, uh, let's let's uh, start with with uh, with uh, Ezio. I would like to speak with him more. Um, the cinematography work depends, of course, all the movements and and uh, the dialogue form depends on the, the faces, but also uh, it depends on the relations of the of the prota 